Hello everyone and welcome to episode 44 of my Human Mage playthrough. This entire episode is going to have a lot going on and we're going to do a lot of road trekking like I said last episode. At the start of this episode I want to talk about one topic but while we talk about that I went and did some quests in the Badlands and then I went to Arathi Highlands and between those two zones I pretty much finished up those zones. There are still some quests there but I don't think I'm going to do them. And then at the end of this section I went to Stranglethorn Vale and did one quest there while turning in another quest from the Arathi Highlands. But something I want to talk about is that a theme that we've seen in the last few episodes here is that I've been condensing down a lot of content into shorter episodes, which I think for World of Warcraft, I've already explained this, is something that I think I actually like. This is how I like to present this series, but I was also kind of forced into this a little bit at this part of the series because there's really not a lot of stuff going on in World of Warcraft. And I think as we hit like level 47, we're going to have a few episodes that kind of slow down a little bit because there's going to be a lot more lore and stuff to talk about. But right now there's not too much going on as far as like story in the game, which I think is something we see just in general with the game is that once you hit level like 30, I think the lore and like story of like questing kind of slows down, especially for like humans and like dwarves and gnomes. Where like their storylines, especially in the Kingdom of Stormwind, is like really, really, really good up until level 30. And then all the stories after there are still pretty good, but it just slows down and there's not as much stuff going on. Where in like the Swamp of Sorrows, what was there ever to really talk about? The Draenei, and then like the history from Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2, which I talked a lot about the Draenei, really what was going on, and I talked a little bit about Warcraft 1, 2, and 3 in that episode. And here in the Badlands, really the only big thing was like the Keepers and like the Old Gods and stuff like that, which I touched on, but it's probably going to be with stuff we focus more on in the future. And then Arathi Highlands, we've already spent a ton of time just talking about it when we were in the earlier levels of the zone, and really all what's going on with this area right here is that I was doing some stuff with the Booty Bay Pirates and then we were also dealing with like an old highborn civilization where they turned into Nagas and they still have some like elven jewels in the waters here and you can see like an old ruins of an old city that they had. But beyond that, not too much going on story-wise in this part of the episode. And I think that's probably something we're going to see throughout like the rest of the series, except for the few episodes around level 50, starting like 48-ish, where we will be talking a lot more about stuff going on. But as I finished up all these quests, I wanted to dive deep into the world and talk about a festival that's going on. And then I also wanted to travel the road a little bit. So let's get started with that. So here we are in Stormwind City and I want to take a special look at a festival that's going on right now. And this is like the first festival that I'm looking at, as long as you don't count the Darkmoon Fair as a festival, which happens once a month for a week. But I want to look at Children's Week, which right here we can see that there are a ton of orphans and we're here at the Stormwind Orphanage. And if we come into here, we can see that there are a bunch of children here. And then in Orgrimmar on the Horde side, there's a very similar place where there's an orphanage there. And basically what's going on here is that like the war between the Horde and the Alliance, as well as all the different conflicts of the world have left many of the children to become orphans as their parents and any other guardians have died in the conflicts against enemy forces. And then here we have two orphan matrons who are basically just taking care of them and helping them out as they grow up. And we have the opportunity for one week out of the year to basically take one of the children on an adventure around the world. And I haven't done this in a very, very long time. And then we can look at this quest called Children's Week. You're willing to help us here at the orphanage? Bless you, friend. Your aid during Children's Week will be invaluable. Take this whistle and you will only be able to use it for a short amount of time, typically not longer than Children's Week itself. When you use it, you will be able to talk with the child you've agreed to look after. Using it again will dismiss the child. By all means, Athos, use the whistle and meet your reward. I'm sure the child will be most eager to meet you. So we now have a child at our beck and call that we can use this whistle that we have for two days. And then we have a quest that we can turn in so we can turn this in. And he says, um, hi, my name is Randis and I guess you're looking after me. You're an adventurer like my mom and dad were. I'm happy to meet you. I hope we'll have a lot of fun together. I have some things I like to do. And the matron says you'll be like a big brother to me during this week. I like that a whole bunch, yes sir. So let's complete this quest. And then we have three quests here. So we have the Bow of the Eternals, where we can take this orphan to Darnassus and we can look at the bank. And then we can pick up another quest, which is the Stonerod Dam. So we can take the orphan to the Stonerod Dam in Lochmodan. 
you should take him to the middle of the dam so you can see over the giant waterfall. And then lastly, we have Spooky Lighthouse. Take the orphan to see the lighthouse of the coast of Westfall. And then we now have three quests where we can take our orphan to three different locations, two of which we have been to. We have been to the Stone Rod Dam and we have been to the lighthouse in Westfall. So those two will be super, super easy to get to. And then after that, we have one more quest to go to Darnassus. And that is somewhere that we have not been at all in this series, but I've been wanting to go there anyways to do a few other things. So I think it just makes sense that we go there this episode. So we have the lighthouse right over here off the coast of Longshore here in Westfall. So we can go ahead and swim across to it and then we can show it to the orphan. So let's go ahead and run up here a little bit. And then we also have our ghost friend here, Captain Grayson, and we've completed this quest. So then we can turn in Spooky Lighthouse, and we'll have gotten a tiny bit of experience from that, as well as some Alliance reputation, which increases all of our reputations with the Alliance here, which is kind of cool. But now we have completed that, so next is Stone Rot Dam, so I think I'll go ahead and teleport to Iron Forge, and then we can fly over to Thosomar. And then here we have the Stone Rod Dam here in Loch Modan, one of my favorite locations in World of Warcraft. I just absolutely love this area and it's kind of one of the reasons why I don't like Cataclysm that much. It's just because I feel a little bit of pain because of what happens in that expansion. But let's go ahead and run across the dam and we can reach the center of it where our orphan can look out across the waterfall here. And then we completed that objective so we can turn this in and now the last one we have right now is to go to Darnassus which we have to go to Minotho Harbor in order to get towards Darnassus because that is the port to Kalimdor of course we also have one down in Booty Bay and uh, we could run back to Thelsamar to get to Minotho Harbor but I think I want to do something a little fun here because we haven't used slow fall at all in this series yet and I think I want to use it right now. So let's go ahead and just say goodbye to our orphan. Let's go ahead and jump off and then I'll go ahead and use this and then we will be able to land in the water here and then we can get over to the edge of that waterfall and our orphan is coming with us as well which is really fun and he's kind of falling. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of an interesting thing going on. I think that would work if we had like a pet with us as well. But now let's go ahead and get over to the edge of this waterfall. We can also see the dam off in the distance right there. So this is definitely a special angle of the dam we can get. But then here, let's go ahead and do the same exact thing. I think we could just drop into the water there if we wanted without slow falling. But this is kind of fun and we haven't done this in a while now. But I am kind of going through my light feathers so I might have to stock up on them sometime soon. And now lastly, let's go ahead and jump off here and then we can go ahead and make our way down to the bottom level of the weapons here. Instead of having to run through Dunagaz over there, there are some crocolisks and then if we remember there are some gnolls around here as well. But we are twice their level now. So let's go ahead and just land here. And then uh, if you notice, we can like jump and then you slow fall while you're jumping in the air, which is kind of fun. But I'm going to go ahead and avoid all of these people and there are a ton of trolls right there. There's a group of four troll mages and they all have similar names I think so that's very interesting. Might be like, well it looks like it's like a party of people but they're like five levels higher or eight levels higher than the nose here just farming them. Seems a little weird but we're gonna go ahead and ignore them because we have an adventure to go on. So let's go ahead and get to Minotho Harbor. This human orphan is definitely like a superhuman because he's able to run at the speed of my horse and he's able to like fly through the air and he's able to survive great falls and he doesn't drown. The Alliance definitely has a future given the powers of this orphan. But here we are in Minotha Harbor and we can come to the docks here and if we remember we came down on the southern docks here to get to Theramo Isle on Kalimdor which is the direction that we want to go to but we have the northern docks here and I believe the boat just left I saw it leaving as we came into town but we can go ahead and wait for the boat here and then as the boat comes we can go ahead and take it towards Aberdyne which is really close to Darnassus and where we need to go. Let's go ahead and talk to Don Pompa right here. He says this dock here well you can catch the ship that goes to that night of place. What's its name? Uh, Aberdyne I think. I don't really know for sure. I just load and unload stuff. 
So we can say goodbye to him, and then we can go ahead and wait here. And I'm really excited to come here because this is probably one of the most nostalgic locations in all World of Warcraft for me, given that my first character and then my second, like main character, were both night elves. So I have a little bit of a connection to this area of the world. And this is a place that we're only going to be kind of like getting a sneak peek at right now and really just kind of dipping our toes into like the environments and like the stories going on in this area of the world and we'll dive deeper once we play a night elf character and then we have the boat coming in right now and then we can get on the boat and then the boat can depart from Minnethor Harbor and we can sail across the Great Sea to Kalimdor and then we can arrive in Darkshore here and the, the northern end of Kalimdor which once we come onto the docks I'll go ahead and open our map and we can take a look at where we are in the road but we see it coming in right here where we can see a night elf village the village of Aubredine there off the distance and a very very long dock right here so let's go ahead and go into the village really quickly so I can get the flight path and then we'll look at the map as we travel down these docks and then we're gonna have to come back to the docks to be able to get to Darnassus but if you look at our map right here here we are in a dark shore and then I'll go ahead and turn it down here and then if you zoom out a little bit here we are in Kalimdor where we are in the northwestern corner and Theramore Isle where we have been is all the way down here and kind of like the bottom of the middle of Kalimdor on the eastern side but I see the boat coming in right now which we need to get on in order to go to Darnassus so let's go ahead and come up here really quickly and then I'm stuck and we can get to this flight path right here the Hippogriff Master. So we have been riding griffins our entire time, but if we were to take the flight path here, we would be able to ride a Hippogriff, which is really, really cool. But we are going to go ahead and say goodbye to the village of Aberdeen right now, and we will explore this more in depth in the future, hopefully. And then we can go ahead and get back onto the docks. And then the boat is right there waiting for us. And we also have the boat to Mendethel Harbor waiting for us as well, if you want to get on that, but we are going to go towards Darnassus and this is kind of like a fun thing because Darnassus for anyone who doesn't know is located in Teldrassil and Teldrassil is a giant tree which was planted by I believe Fandor Stackholm and basically it grew into a giant tree that was basically an attempt at creating a new world tree after Nordrassil and Hydra was destroyed by the Burning Legion and destroyed by Archimonde so it's basically the Night Elves trying to form a new home while they also have a bunch of encampments here in northern Kalimdor. And I'll talk more about that all in the future, but as we come into Darnassus here and into Teldrassil, we're going to see it's a very, very giant tree. And it's like a very interesting zone because there's not a lot of like zones, I think in like MMOs or like areas and games as a whole, where like the entire zone is like a giant tree. So let's go ahead and I'll come up onto the second deck here. And then we can kind of zoom in here and we can see it loading and off in the distance here. For anyone who plays Minecraft, I remember like 10 years ago, someone basically took like all the map geometry from like World of Warcraft and basically ported it into Minecraft somehow, I'm not exactly sure, and basically created all of the road. And I remember going to Teldrassil in like Minecraft map and basically just trying to like fly up it and being able to get to like the top because it's so so tall and as we can kind of look up here we cannot even see anywhere near the top and when flying was unlocked in Cataclysm for people to be able to fly in this area it definitely takes a long way to fly up and as you see here this is kind of like the diameter and the circumference of this tree right here so it's definitely a giant tree and it goes up high high into the sky where we can see some of the branches coming off of it right there but here we are in Wuthron Village and I'm going to go ahead and go get the flight path because Night Elves automatically have the flight path here unlocked but since we are humans we do not. So let's go ahead and talk to the Hippogriff Master right here and then if we look at our map right here we can actually fly to Theramore which I was not expecting us to be able to but it looks like we do have the connection to be able to go there which is very nice for us but here we are in Darnassus which is a really really cool town that basically no one comes to because it's in the middle of nowhere basically in like the northwestern corner of Kalimdor. It's kind of not anywhere close to like any big raids or dungeons or anything and the layout of the area itself is pretty spread out compared to like Ironforge and Stormwind where everything's more condensed. So because of all those reasons 
not a lot of people come here except for night elves traveling through the area and then of course anything that would bring other people to this area like children's week here where we can bring the orphan to the bank right here and then we have completed this quest which is the third and final quest from this section of this so we can turn this in and then we have two more quests right here Jane is autographed. They say that Lady Jane of Proudmoore and Theramore is one of the greatest heroes the Alliance has ever had. When I grow up, I want to be a hero of the Alliance too. So we can go ahead and take our orphan to Lady Jane of Proudmoore and Theramore and they can get an autograph. And then lastly, we have you scream ice cream where we can get some strawberry ice cream for our ward. The lad seems to prefer Tiggles brand ice cream, which I believe is located in Stormwind City. Oh no, it's located in the Shimmering Flats. So I guess we will be going on a little bit more of an adventure here where we can see all the way down here is we have the Shimmering Flats here. So I think next we're going to do a couple of things here in Darnassus that I wanted to do. So first things first, let's go ahead and come towards the Temple of the Moon, I believe it's called. Yes, the Temple of the Moon, where I believe we can get our Mage Trainer in this area, or our Porter Trainer to be exact, because there are no Mage Trainers in the city because Night Elves cannot become Mages, at least in Vanilla WoW. But we have our portal trainer right here, which is a human that we can chat with. And then we can learn two new skills, teleport Darnassus and then portal Darnassus, which I guess we have to wait until level 50 to unlock, which I did not realize was the case. I thought it was level 40, just like to Stormwind and to Ironforge, but we have unlocked teleport, which is very, very nice. So we can go ahead and just teleport back to Darnassus whenever we need it. So I'll go ahead and just throw this on my bar, and then when we're level 50, we can go ahead and return here to unlock the portal. I wonder if he had to be like level 30 to unlock Teleport Darnassus. It would have been definitely really awkward if he came here level 20 to try to unlock that, and then we couldn't. But beyond that, I have all that there, and we can go ahead and head north because I turned in the wool quest for Stormwind and for Ironforge, and I had some extra wool here, and I bought like five more pieces at like the start of this section of the video. So we can go ahead and turn these pieces in just to get a little bit of a boost in experience with Darnassus and to also see where it is located here in the city. So if we come right over here we are in the Craftsman's Terrace and we can come into the tailoring area and then we have our Cloth Quartermaster right here where we can turn in a donation of wool and then here we got 165 reputation with Darnassus and 650 experience. So we're actually pretty close to honored with Darnassus and I think the only wool turned in that we haven't done is the Nomergon Exa House, which I might end up doing at some point, but I'm not particularly interested in that so far. But those are the three major things that I wanted to do in Darnassus, and we will return here at some point in the future just to explore it a little more. But let's go ahead and go back to the Hippogriff Master here in Uthron Village, where we can come through this portal here, which is really cool, which I didn't mention when we went through it. And then we can go ahead and fly to Theramore Isle to meet Lady Jane and Proudmore once again. And then we can go ahead and ride to the Shimmering Flats. So this is going to be a very long flight path. But a really cool part of this flight path is that we are on a new flying mount here. Where we are on a hippogriff instead of a griffin. Which is really cool. It's a nice like, change of pace a little bit. And of course if we were night elves leveling through here. Being able to get on a griffin would be really cool. Because we will have been super used to the hippogriff. But... Let's go ahead and fly most of the way through the entire continent of Kalimdor, and then we can arrive in Theramore Isle. And now that we are in Theramore, let's go ahead and run up to the tower and then we can bring our kid out again with the whistle and then we can go ahead and get him his autograph. And then we have Lady Jane of Proudmoore right over here which we can bring our orphan towards and then let's chat with Jaina and then we can request her to give an autograph 
and now we have Jaina's autograph that says be strong Randis and aspire to be the hero you were meant to be by Lady Jaina Proudmore. So let's go ahead and give this to the orphan and then we have one more quest here and uh, this is a weird graphical bug. So let's go ahead and run down back into the city here but before we head out towards Thousand Needles and to the Shimmering Flats as we go on that adventure, I want to turn in a few quests because we have three quests I believe to turn in. The first of which is just over here. We have this quest to turn in the Crawler Lakes that we got when we were in the Swamp of Sorrows two episodes ago so that we can go ahead and get this bit of experience and maybe gold that we might get from this. So oh, we actually got this chest piece here. So let's go ahead and turn this in and then that was the final quest of that chain. I think it was like a two part chain where first we had to get turtle meat and then we got those crawler legs. And now we have this chest piece here which I don't believe is better than what we currently have equipped and it doesn't, I mean it looks okay but I think I like the one we have equipped more right now. But I might go ahead and throw this into our bank just to kind of hold on to it for a little bit. But let's go ahead and run out this way. And then I think I might cut across the bay here. This might be a little bit of a disaster, but we'll try our best because I want to go back to Tabitha to turn in some quests, which might be like the last Tabitha's quests we do, except for the one where we have to go to the Shimmering Flats in order to turn in. So that is kind of convenient for us and the lighting just dramatically changed there. But let's go ahead and head over to Tabitha. The orphan is just so powerful. And then here we are, we can go ahead and run inside the house and then we can turn in these two quests we have. Well one of which we picked up in Stormwind, and then one of which we got from here. And then we can go ahead and turn this one in, I believe is the correct one. And then I'll go ahead and just pick up this quest just in case we want to do it. But we might not do it, we might end up doing it. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do moving forward in the future, it's just kind of what I feel like doing. But now that we are done with this quest here to talk to Tabitha, the next thing we have to do is head to the Shimmering Flats, which is a little bit of an adventure for us as we continue traveling the road here in this episode. So let's go ahead and get back towards the Shady Rest Inn, which we were at several episodes ago when we were doing some detective work, and I want to get to the road that's right here. How convenient for us. So let's go ahead and just follow this road to get to the inn. And then here we are at the Shady Rest Inn, and our first step in our adventure to the Shimmering Flats is to go through the barrens which we've been right next to but I don't believe we've entered yet in this series so this should be a little fun as we get like a little sneak peek at the hordes second zone in Kalimdor here where the trolls the orcs and the tauren all come through here and do some questing in this area and it's probably the biggest or second biggest zone in contention with Strangothorn Vale for the biggest zones and the classic version of World of Warcraft and maybe all World of Warcraft in general I'm not exactly sure but let's go ahead and run through here and I think this is a very pretty sight here with the moon rising I believe beyond the trees here and then we have a very sad story person right here that we're going to just run past as we continue our way south now. So as we exit the barrens here, we will enter the Thousand Needles, which is a very cool location, which is where we need to go to. But the nearest flight path that I am wanting to unlock is actually in another zone called Teneris, which we are going to be entering. And we might do some questing there and a few levels on this character, depending on what we need to do in order to level up. So combining Teneris with a Thousand Needles with the Barrens with Teldrassil with Darkshore will be five brand new zones that we've explored in this episode and then there was also like three more zones or four more zones or whatever that we flew through earlier where we did that little bit of a flying time lapse to get to Theramore from Darnassus and we might actually enter a sixth zone because there's another fly path that I might get just in this area as a quick detour but let's go ahead and just run this way and we have a couple horde up here which is a very kind of like interesting like thing where how the alliance enter thousand needles where we actually have to run past a couple of horde and a lot of people get like really scared about these horde but they're not that big of an issue you can pretty much just run past them but a lot of horde like player characters will often sit right here and will mind control alliance running through here and then will force them to jump off the edge here which is very 
like that happened to me and it annoyed me but it's also kind of funny it's kind of like one of those like trolling like world P pvp things that we see where like really you know, there's not a lot of fighting that goes on anymore it's just a bunch of like random stuff going on but i want to make a quick detour to head west to pick up a flight path over here and then we can go ahead and head east but this is a very interesting location where we had like a great lift that we took in order to get down to this place because it's like a giant canyon area and it kind of looks a little bit like badlands where we can't really see right now because it's super dark but it's like orangey ready type of area and it's like very really dry and arid but there are basically like a thousand needles coming up out of this zone here and as a horde character you can actually do some quests or we could run up there if we wanted to but i'm not going to where you do quests on top of the needles here but up here we have a night elf town or more of a camp i guess on the eastern edge of a brand new zone known as fairless so i guess we are technically entering six zones this episode but not spending too much time in any one of these zones so let's go ahead and run up here and then we have a flight path right here that we can get which i believe will connect back to theramore so we have yep we have theramore right there and we can also fly all the way back to teltrasil if we wanted to and now let's go ahead and run towards the shimmering flats and we will not be doing quests here just yet Ahead of us here, we're going to have to be a little careful because there are going to be some horde guards that are at the base of this needle right here. As you can see that there is a torn camp all the way up there, which is a horde torn camp. And there are some other torn camps that are part of the Grim Totem Torrens, which are the horde are basically fighting in this zone. But there are some level, I believe, 45 guards here at Freewind Post. So we are going to try to give them a little bit of a wide berth, but I think they are going to aggro on us no matter what we do right here. So we're just going to run past them and we should be 100% fine to just run straight past them. And we might actually just be not be aggroing them at all. This one might be a little close, but when you run through here, it's like a level 30 to get to the Shimmering Flats as an alliance because that's a level 30 zone and we did aggro this brave. So I'm just going to keep running. We slowed her down with our frost armor there and we should be clear from her that there. And she's only level 45 and with this being 41 it's not too big of a deal but it's definitely a little scary when you're level 30 and i think i have actually died to them before just running past them when i was on a level 30 character but now that we are past that that was our last major obstacle to getting to the shimmering flats wish is right here and the shimmering flats is really cool because it's kind of like a sub zone within the thousand needles where it's very like separated and completely distinct from the rest of the zone but it's still dry and arid and a lot of the wildlife here is similar to that within the rest of thousand needles but we are just going to be running through here and we will return here in the future on another character to do some quests through here but this is kind of like a really cool area because it's like a giant racetrack that is off over there and we basically help with like the races around here and one of the things going on with the races is that they sell concessions and they are selling ice cream so we can get some ice cream to give to our orphan because it's children's week and we have spent like uh, almost an hour and a half in like my real time right now in this episode just traveling across the road to be able to get here so here we are and we can go ahead and come into this camp or a little bit of a town I guess and we can go ahead and get this ice cream and then I think this is a quest to go turn into Booty Bay which I might just pick up just to get a little bit of extra experience but let's go ahead and first things first is we can get from the ice cream vendor here we can get the special ice cream flavor hey. which is Tugul's strawberry flavored ice cream then. and then we can go ahead and give this to our orphan and that was the last quest here to complete and now we have a warden of the alliance where we can return to Stormwind and we can go ahead and return the orphan back and then we can get a very cool pet here where we can pick one of these pets or we could get five gold if you wanted instead so let's go ahead and accept this and then I think first before we go there we can go ahead and come over here and then I'm just going to turn in this quest it's a quest from Tabitha and then I'll just pick up the next quest from it and then I guess we have to do a little bit of an adventure here so let's go ahead and run around and see who we need to talk to just to complete this quest really quickly so this is a little bit of a hidden quest and I kind of just looked it up but we can slash beckon on this chicken here 
and then he turns into a human, which we can get this phrase from. And then we can turn in this quest, and then I think there's another one we get. So then let's bring this back to Tabitha whenever we go back to Dustwalla Marsh. Let's go ahead and head to Tenaris, where we can go to the goblin town of Gadgetzan, which is the third town in the Steam Leader Cartel which we will have visited now in this Let's Play series. The fourth one, I'm not entirely sure if we'll be going to, it's Everlook, which is located in Winter Spring, which is like a level 55 to 60 area here in Kalimdor. But we can go ahead and right up here, and then we can go ahead and go back down into Tenaris a little bit, and we'll see that it is kind of similar to Thousand Needles and the Shimmering Flats here, where it's a dry and arid area, just like the Barrens as well, but it is a little bit different and it's like a different color of orange and there are some really fun quests in here which we might be doing in this let's play series might not depends on how much work we get done in strength of thorn veil next episode but this is the town of gadget sand and it is a really cool area but we are just going to leave it at that for now and we can get the griffin master right here and then if we interact with the griffin master we now have four brand new flight paths that we can go to instead of just Theramore, but I'm going to go ahead and teleport back to Stormwind so we can go ahead and drop our orphan off at the orphanage. And returning to the orphanage here, we can go ahead and talk to the orphan matron, Nightingale, and then we can turn in the quest of Warden of the Alliance, and she says, May the heavens bless you, Athos. You've done more for Randus than most would ever think of doing for him. Thank you. You're a shining star in the skies of the Alliance. Please, if you can spare the time, come back and visit us. I know that Randus would like that, as would I. Randus had so much fun with you, Athos, he wanted to give you one of his favorite pets to remember him by. So we can go ahead and take one of his pets. So we can take Piglet's Collar to summon Mr. Wiggles the pig, or we can get this rat cage to summon Whiskers the rat, this turtle box to summon Speedy the turtle, or we could just get five gold if we wanted to. And the description here says a bag of five gold for those who like telling children there's no great father winter and this is a, an option that we can get one of each for every year so we'd have to play for three years in order to get all three of these if we wanted to but we are only going to be doing that one on this character and i think i want to go with the turtle box here i think i want speedy the turtle to come with us on our adventure so let's go ahead and accept this and then i can go ahead and reorganize my inventory here a little bit and then i'll go ahead and drag the turtle box right here to be right next to our mount and we have our first companion pet that i can summon right here so we have speedy athos's companion that can come with us on our adventures and he is definitely a little fast and this is just a fun non-combat pet that will hang out with us as we go on our own adventures as long as I remember to summon him as needed. But I might keep him away in my bags to prevent him from danger even though he can't get hurt. But I think now that we have returned to Stormwind and we have traveled basically the entire road of Azeroth and we have been in many many different zones like over 10 zones in just this episode. I'm going to go ahead and call it good here, and I hope you all enjoyed watching this episode. I very much enjoyed playing through it, and I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.